Um, Dad? Yeah? What is the mind? Is it just a system of impulses, or is it something tangible? Relax. What is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. The Ken's Laser. Welcome to another episode of Occam's Laser, the podcast where we talk about science, philosophy, and more. We're your hosts, Sean Mooney and Dulta Ophianagon, and today we're talking about the recent news that SpaceX launched a capsule called Dragon to the space station, and it docked. It did. Um, what'd you make of that? It's pretty cool. All right, so to recap, for the last, since 2011, NASA have had to rely on Russia to get astronauts into space um, because they discontinued the space shuttle. Years uh, ago. Yep. Yeah. And this was a pain in the butt. <laughs> Excuse the profanities. <laughs> and so then they, they funded, so NASA have given, I think, $2.5 billion to SpaceX to come up with some kind of thing to take astronauts. Human in. launch mechanism. Uh, and Boeing got four point two billion. Yeah, the two of them are kind of in a weird joint contract, I believe. But yeah, but uh, SpaceX kind of took the biggest step of any of them so far to kind of making mm-hmm. that happen. But the other day, so there's nobody on it, but this is a capsule that could conceivably house seven people. There was a fake dummy. Oh, was there? Yeah. Oh, good. Did you not see the video? No. How did you not see the video? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, the big thing is that it's. It costs NASA so much money to send humans into space through Russia. It's something like $80 million per seat, per ticket to get to space. Yeah. So like, at least, I guess it's no cost to them in terms of they pay for the contract for somebody to develop this. But then in the future, you can see a scenario where they just essentially say to SpaceX, oh, we'll pay you X amount and it'll be less than what Russia would charge them, I guess. I, that's their idea because SpaceX reused their rockets, right? Yeah, because I saw uh, an interview with a Russian space analyst who was basically saying, like, Russia are fucked and this is the worst thing that could have happened to them because their entire program, their whole mechanism for supporting their space travels is just getting money off NASA to put up astronauts. Yeah, I mean, they are using their Soyuz rocket. I don't know what date that first launched. Yeah, 60s, but it's a, like uh, yeah. extreme legacy yeah. rocket where it's like reliable because they know, like they're not going to change it. They know it works, but it kind of defeats like you basically like I, re- I read something saying that um, in Russia, the like engineers who work for their space uh, program yeah. basically aren't incentivized to do anything. They're basically like, here's what works. Just do it again, please. Um, and all of the engineers that work there are really old. Uh, and we'll be retiring soon or whatever, but there's no incentive for young people to go in. So there's like just getting some sort of uh, brain drain, essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's a big problem for them. But they they have like such a good history in space. So they had the first man in space. Yuri first, first probe in space as well. With the yeah. And they, they sent the dog. Laika. Laika. Laika, yeah. Um, the Soyuz rocket, though, when you look at it, it looks so antiquated. I mean, it's the classic... Um, a big, just put loads of fuel in a metal kind of can and just <laughs> big metal send it. Tin can. Up. But there's some software we use in analyzing radio data mm-hmm. that is like developed in Fortran. So it's developed in like the 70s and it's still used. And the only reason it's used is because it's so reliable because every single bug has been discovered, documented, yeah. patched. And like all of these new algorithms are out that are like 10 times faster and stuff, but people don't use them just because they're like, you know, it might give you a wrong result every 10 times or whatever. And then it's actually not worth the, like you probably spend as long time chasing down bugs as you do. So you can see the, the benefit, but eventually, you know, it doesn't make sense to just keep reusing the. Yeah. I mean, that's the issue with these rockets in a hardware sense, uh, but at way larger stakes, right? You're sending people yeah. to space. You don't want it to blow up. So you can see why, you would stick with the same system. You're yeah. guaran- like, we're not guaranteed. There's always a risk, I guess, when you're launching people in a massive explosive rocket. <laughs> like, but um, you can see why they would, like, you know, say let's just keep it what works and not change. Yeah, there's that technological readiness level thing where we had to learn about um, in in the European Space Agency. I'm sure all of them, they have an all equivalent. Of them have yeah, it. but just basically how rigorous technology has to 
be to go to space and they end up using stuff that's kind of even slightly out of date in, just because by the time some tech is good enough for space then it's yeah i mean it's a fairly rigorous procedure to go from i have this new doohickey doohickey essentially <laughs> yeah. yeah uh i want to use it to, on part of my rocket and send it to yeah. space but it's going to take me 10 years to put it through all the proper tests and make sure and like proper actual flight tests to make sure that it's it'll hold up in space because it's such a different environment yeah yeah. Uh, so yeah I mean you, you don't I can't really blame Russia for doing that but I can definitely see like once NASA lost their ability to send humans to space it's like you know what they gave it a few years and then they're like let's make a proper system a modernized one that will actually be reliable but also new yeah, so not look did, like did you read that article as well where it was saying that this was like an, almost like an opiate or something for Russia in that they didn't have to do any work. They would just get their money and like it forced them to never innovate. But now yeah, this was saying like this might actually jumpstart the space industry in Russia because they're like, oh, now we have to actually do something for our money and try to come up with cheaper ways to do things and better ways. Yeah, like it might actually kind of spark a bit of a space race again instead of like everyone's kind of resting on their laurels at the minute. But the... So the other thing is, so Russia had some really disparaging things to say about the launch. Um, the SpaceX launch. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, just like throwing shade, um, you know, being like, "Oh, that's great. Who cares?" Yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Congratulations. But and then when it went up, so there's a Russian astronaut, cosmonaut, I suppose, in the space station, and they asked him yeah. to stay in a different part. You oh, he's like, "Don't touch the dragon one. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's too might, new and it, too it might cool." Explode. <laughs> so they were kind of a bit antsy over it, and then China on Monday announced their renewed plans for their own. Uh, Chinese space station they're putting up but like Monday was a very telling date to make that announcement um, and then Jeff Bezos from who we'll get on to anyway who owns the Blue Origin the other private company mm-hmm. like he also has a bit of an ongoing feud with Musk and was saying like oh it's not worth doing some of the stuff they're doing so like it's just a lot of the articles read as like oh look it's great what people can do when they all come together but all these com- like countries and companies are all just really pissed off at each other and not very yeah they're all just seem to be doing their own thing essentially yeah i know like obviously i think blue origin and spacex at the minute they're probably the two front runners uh of like private space industry in the u.s there's also like there's the united launch alliance which i hadn't heard of until recently but apparently they're a very big company or looking at manned space flight as well but blue origin are super private compared to spacex because of basically because of elon musk because he's just very open about their technologies and their milestones that they reach, whereas Blue Origin is just more secretive. Um, which makes sense, I guess, if you're trying to develop, you know, IP and yeah. you don't want other people to steal their ideas. But I know that Blue Origin were the first company to launch a reusable rocket. But in their test, they just went straight up and straight down. Yeah, see, on paper, it looked impressive. And yeah. when I looked into it, they didn't even go up that far. I yeah. mean, like SpaceX actually went to space and back. Yeah, so SpaceX were the first people to actually send a rocket uh, with a payload that was reusable. Which was a car. Uh, or was that the, that, that was part the of it. That, was late, that wasn't the first one, though. Yeah. Uh, they did a couple of other missions, like side missions that were contracted to them by NASA and stuff. But they had to go on like an arc to actually deliver the payload into orbit and stuff. So it was a much more complicated process. Mm. So that's interesting, though, that like Blue Origin just have this kind of uh, milestone where they say, oh, we were the first company yeah. who did it, but <laughs> SpaceX yeah. are like, damn. 20 feet off the ground and back down. You actually hear like interviews of like Elon Musk talking about it, and he'll say, like, oh, the first reusable rocket delivery system or something where he like puts a little asterisk at the yeah. end to like justify it. But that reminds me of the roller coaster in Tato Park that's like... <laughs> the you know because every roller coaster wants to have a term that they're the best and that's the third largest wooden roller coaster in europe so <laughs> so impressive not not the largest not the and then wooden and then the other clause europe as well so it's not even yeah it's so many subsections like and, i might build a roller coaster out of sand and it yeah well something. wood doesn't really strike much confidence in my like but um, yeah i mean it's, it's a bit to be honest, it just makes me not want to go on. But, but it's a shame that SpaceX, yeah, kind of got caught out on that milestone because they're actually, I think they're actually a good bit ahead of Blue Origin, but then you don't yeah. know because they're just also secret. I think the general consensus, though, is that SpaceX are ahead. Um, and at the minute, it's looking like SpaceX will be the first people to, the first private company to send humans to space. Um, but it's it's close, like it's very close. 
So there's the United Launch Alliance and Blue Origin. And Richard Branson, doesn't he, he have something? Yeah, I actually don't know much about that, though. It kind of comes and goes. That's also never talked about too much. So I don't know if that's more of a tourist thing. And it's, I think it is. They don't get out. They just fly around the world or whatever. They, don't get out. You know, they get don't. Out. <laughs> the tour, they just go up on it. It's basically like a airplane that takes off. and. Yeah, I know they have that weird looking... It's like a plane rocket thing. It's like touches the edge of space, but it, that just doesn't kiss do it for space. me. Don't you want to kiss space? <laughs> That's actually Pay millions of so dollars. many good photos come out of these things. Like that, the dock, the photo of the dock of mm. um, the dragon, dragon and the ISS is unbelievable. And then also an older photo, but I love seeing the, the shuttle, like NASA's shuttle, on top of. A Boeing plane flying yeah, through. That's absolutely <laughs> crazy to see. It's it, yeah. how does that plane fly it's with so that on top bigger, of it? Yeah, it <laughs> just crazy. blows my mind. I don't know anything about aerodynamics. Like, <laughs> and then if you're just a pilot and you're like, oh, today we've no people on board, just a just, rocket on your roof. just a shuttle. <laughs> yeah. So, I think it's worth saying though. Like NASA also have their own project lined up to send humans to space. So that's their SLS or their Space Launch System. But it's been like plagued with problems and it costs so much money. And the main issue between it and the other private companies is that their rockets wouldn't be reusable. Well, that's the whole point nearly. Because then they're <laughs> yeah. just reinventing the wheel. Well, that was the thing. I, I, they needed a new rocket that could... So they decommissioned all of the shuttles and they needed a new system that could send humans to space. And I think when this initially started, it was before reusable rockets looked like being likely. Mm. Because SpaceX kind of just came along at Blue Origin as well and just did it out of the blue. Like, you know, people are saying, oh, it's five years away. And then like SpaceX did it the next year or something. So... I guess that's why I didn't plan it. And usually with like NASA projects like that, it's it's just so so definite and so much planning goes into it that it's really hard. They have gone back and changed the design multiple times, but yeah, but you could be talking like ten thousand employees, so to reorientate oh, yeah. that ship. I mean, yeah, it's huge. And then huge they effort. all of the big telescopes. So NASA put up Hubble, and the James Webb Space Telescope is eventually going to go up. Both were like sometime, yeah, like twice as long as they planned 10 years and it actually took 20 and the cost was like 10 a factor of 10 higher yeah. and i mean that's not even people involved that's just putting a bucket in space with some like, ccds basically some sensors, or, yeah. Yeah. so yeah i think that's the big difference between say like the dragon capsule which would be used on their on the spacex reusable rockets like their falcon rockets um it still costs like if you look at the total cost of developing the dragon capsule and stuff it's like Something like one billion dollars or something crazy. When, yeah, it sounds like a lot. It until, sounds like a lot until you compare it to like the defense budget of the US, which yeah. it's less than it comes to like less than one percent of their defense budget. So it's so not like, actually that's like every two days. Then you know you're talking that that's the spend. Yeah, but I guess I think that initial amount was like to develop everything. But now that they have the reusable rockets, it'll be much cheaper, right? Yeah, but even that's yeah. Thanks. It'll still be really expensive, but like way way cheaper than it would be to launch the NASA space launch system. Yeah, every time it's like a tenth of the price or something. But it really kind of shows the value to private or what kind of a small private enterprise can do. Like it's it was an industry waiting to be overrun. Yeah, exploited. By, yeah. yeah, just somebody saying like, "What's that annoying marketing term that's always used?" Um, where they. Um, disrupted they're a disruptor like a uh, industry is just disruptor <laughs> they upscuttled the competition <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I believe yeah. that's the official term um, but they're so obviously NASA are a bit like they're delighted I'm sure but um, they obviously still have concerns that it, it mightn't come to fruition because <clears throat> Elon Musk doesn't give off the air of someone who is like calm collected in control stable <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, like I think if there was a if someone came in and said look we can do it next week but there's a 10% extra risk of it going wrong he'd be like cool go for it yeah um, but did, did you see him on the doing the meme review recently no so the weirdest pairing he was on doing the re- meme review on YouTube with uh, uh, Justin Roiland from Rick and Morty oh very good that yeah. does the, like the, the creator and voice person Um and so they just basically look at memes and rate them. But Elon Musk just came across as so odd. There was this, like, so they're randomly, you know, viewer submitted memes, I think. And, like, he just, 
so it was kind of a bit awkward for a few minutes and then one of the memes was just this like dead deer in a pool and like you know just lost his shit like just completely lost it he, like as in laughing he thought it was hilarious it's like it's not that funny sir <laughs> what are you talking what are you laughing about so you should watch that I well, would yeah, the last time i saw him in public was his joe rogan oh the, joe, the, in, the last time i saw him in public <laughs> But he, he also doesn't seem like someone who's like so busy. I can barely spare five minutes. I'll schedule you in a few months if he's going on like meme reviews on YouTube, you know? Yeah. So this is the thing. When he went on Joe Rogan, people were like, oh, he's so busy. Like, thank God he could take time out of his crazy hectic schedule. And like Joe Rogan seems to think that he was also it's like that man works like yeah. 23 hours in the day. But obviously not if he's doing meme reviews. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and then he's gone out with Grimes still. I don't know if that's still the thing. I, you've lost me. <laughs> Grimes is. I actually saw her in the Olympia last year. Really? Like an electronic. I know, like music. I know of her. I just don't know She's any like, of her stuff. Yeah, um, she had a song on Aircom ad last year. Uh, so, Aircom ad. Yeah, so I mean that kind of in a way connects Ireland's fiber, like uh, Aircom, with space. There's a three degrees of separation. Are you an Aircom customer? <laughs> uh, personally, no. Well, you can't go to space then. Oh, yeah. That's actually good, yeah. Loyalty points, if you save up. <laughs> yeah, you get 100,000 loyalty points. You get to go to space. But actually, right. Hold on a second. Okay. NASA. Yes. I was saying they're concerned about... They have some uh, reservations about the SpaceX thing. Mm-hmm. One... So the... Everyone was like, oh, a dock. That's so cool. And it really looked like a scene out of Interstellar where the mm. thing is spinning. Yeah. But... Apparently, the hardest bit is still to come, which is the landing. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, because it's designed to carry humans. So you want it to, like, land. Burst into it. Yeah, you want it to not break while it lands. But, but that's happening, like, as as of tomorrow when we're recording this podcast. So we won't know what happens. Yeah, so. We yeah. really should have waited a day to record this podcast. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's an exercise to see yeah. that the reader go and finish. <laughs> but. You would think it's easy to land something when it just wants to fall down and land in the ocean, which is most of the Earth. Yeah, well, yeah, most of, I guess. But the one, two issues are, one, the it, whatever way it's designed because of the ejector seats in it, yeah, means that it's apparently really unstable shape and it could go into a massive spin. Yeah, it looks like a, a kind of a rounded cone, I guess. Yeah. And I, can't, I can't imagine if you drop, if you drop that from a, a height that it wouldn't want to invert and put the nose down and just start spinning yeah. faster so in our heyday uh we sent tupperware <laughs> containers to the lunch boxes <laughs> lunch boxes to the room of space the, the rim the space rim <laughs> <laughs> i believe that's the official term as well it was like 30 kilometers up it was just with a high altitude balloon and they best time of my life so there was a camera on them though and like we, we kind of thought we'd get good photos, but the thing spins so fast. Uh, it was hectic. Once it goes up, it just starts spinning. You got like two out of a thousand, maybe more, like mm. thousands of photos. You got like maybe five usable photos. And so if you're sitting on something like that as it's spinning, so that was only a couple of kilometers, like you're going to get really sick. <laughs> yeah, I, might, I mean, these astronauts are trained for that, I but guess. But. The other issue is that, um, so, so yeah, like all since Apollo, all of the manned, space missions missions uh, <laughs> landed on tarmac you know they just basically touch down and just glide to a halt well maybe it's for, was this for like the shuttles or like ever yeah. since oh yeah because the apollo ones were in the ocean as well so they were, yeah the last ones but it, like so it's funny that they're going back to coming down quickly releasing parachutes and crashing into the ocean like yeah, that just seems more a rudimentary backwards. kind of yeah like <laughs> yeah i think maybe that's the point though because yeah i mean the shuttle was reusable to a point. Uh, it seems easier, though. It, it's just faster to let it drop into the ocean at a speed that won't damage it. Yeah. And then just go collect it again. But I don't know. Maybe maybe that also has some problems like with seawater and everything. And But apparently corrosive. there's just some concern with the, the parachute deploy mechanism because you really like are banking so much on it and if it doesn't work you're all dead. and it has like all the parachute can ever be is something that just so pops out the back and fills up on its own you know if it yeah doesn't work then i think the dragon capsule though has emergency boosters around the sides if the parachute doesn't work hmm. but then you're relying on 
landing a capsule full of people with rockets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or at least getting it, you know, close enough to the surface of the sea that you can drop in safely. Um, but that's kind of, I mean, like, have you seen some of their rockets trying to re- land again? Like, they blow up. So And that's actually quite an entertaining them. watch. Like, where you think oh, yeah, it's, it's going to land perfectly, one leg kinks in. It's like that and then it anarchist just, inside you is just like, yeah. yes, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> I guess there's probably a lot of fuel in the well, When it lands, there shouldn't be too much. Just it's still enough to blow up, though. But once... um. Back in the Apollo era, like one one of the capsules landed in the water. It actually nearly, um, it like it inverted in the water and like started to sink. So like, although I imagine SpaceX will know where it's going to be, um, before it that's lands. terrifying though. Imagine like you being make like it back. Yeah, <laughs> making it all the way back and then you're just sent to the bottom of the ocean in like a metal. I reach zero sea level. Perfect. Mm. Minus one. <laughs> <laughs> Minus two. <laughs> But SpaceX, so this doesn't inspire confidence in someone who runs like simulations of stuff. SpaceX and NASA said for the parachutes, they ran over a thousand simulations of um, like it re- of re-entry with the parachute design. Yeah. And that sounds like a lot if you don't run computer simulations of things, but a thousand isn't that many. Like you could easily run a million. You know. I guess, yeah, it really depends on what they actually did right yeah yeah it, like each one probably took a week or a month to, to run or something yeah sure. i mean it's if they're yeah. really you know high resolution uh, extensive like you need millions of cores to to simulate then a thousand is a lot <clears throat> but if you can run them in like two days a thousand really isn't that many for let's say trying to like simulate how- but just in terms of results because even if one blows up in a thousand that's still quite high to be sending seven people in like, yeah that's the other thing is that the amount of people in this capsule is quite high so yeah um speaking of like p- sending passengers though i was looking at spacex's other project for this is kind of more based around their mars missions so it's actually interesting there's a lot of companies and uh, governments who have talked about sending people to Mars. Um, so Russia, China, the um, US, so like NASA, uh, ESA in Europe, SpaceX, India, have all announced manned missions to Mars. And Mars 1. <clears throat> Mars 1. Mars 1 was that um, sham. It was like fire festival except for space <laughs> for space enthusiasts remember they were going to bring like 20 people oh, one way and yeah. then there was an irish person got to the last 20 or something yeah and then the way they were going to make revenue was by showing it on tv and filming it yes. getting ads from very the big fire Brother. fire festival but then it turned out so they went bankrupt like two months ago yeah i heard that that irish guy i think was joe roach mm. who's uh works in trinity college oh cool i think i think it was I might be mistaken, but I remember whoever they said that like basically it was just a, a sham from the inside, and they like quit themselves because they're like that's not. I don't want to go on a rocket with you people. Yeah. yeah, you don't know what you're doing, kind of deal. But um, SpaceX, uh, as part of their Mars mission, they're developing their Starship, which is super cool name, um, and it's supposed to be able to like it's not finished yet or anything, but when it is, it's supposed to hold a hundred people. Yeah. Which is a lot of people. That's a whole colony, like that's a clan. Yeah, a clan, yeah. A tribe, you yeah. might say. Um, you go back like 10 years later and they all have like spears and sticks and <laughs> stones thrown at each other. How did this happen? <laughs> but um, yeah, so they're, the plan for that is because it's so big, like it's something like 100 tons uh, between the starship and the rocket. And the rocket they're going to use is their like... Uh, they're Falcon Heavy, I think it's called, or yeah, I think. Super Heavy. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, um, altogether, it's like 120 meters long. So it's this massive like object, and the idea initially it's just going to be launched into orbit, you know, for like plenty of testing or whatever. And then, but it's not something you'd want to test too. Like you, you know what I mean? You would just send it. Yeah, I mean, a couple of times, make sure yeah. Yeah, it's all good because like it's so expensive to launch. Uh, but the idea is that they would also be able to do like retanking, where they launch this big massive it looks like the space shuttle but just way bigger and kind of cooler uh, uh, and you would launch that into orbit around the earth and then you would launch uh, another like refueling tank 
and then you could just switch tanks then. So you use one tank to get it into orbit and then switch and use the other one then if you want to go further, like to Mars or something. But it, once you're in orbit, you actually probably don't need, like it's comparatively less, I'm sure, to Mars. Like you've already escaped. Oh yeah, once you're... Get the well, solar sails up. Well, <laughs> escaping the Earth's gravitational pull is probably still a good bit Sizable, of an effort. Yeah. But yeah. So that's why you can, it's handy that you can switch and get like a full tank or whatever. Yeah. Um... But it's just super interesting that that's their plan. I think they also use it to... So they were going to send people around the moon, and it's also using the same system. Um, mm. But that that was weird, because that was like separately funded by like a private billionaire, essentially, some Japanese guy. Oh, um, someone who's not in the limelight? Like, No, he's some Japanese billionaire. Uh, let me get his name. Yeah, Yusaku Meizawa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing, probably pronounced that wrong. But basically, he, I don't know the ins and outs of it, I don't think anybody does, but I think the gist of it is that he approached SpaceX and was like, I'll give you money to fly me around the moon in your big spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> That's the good thing about being a billionaire, though. You can just be like, money can get you whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it has in this case. Yeah. So he's going to go around uh, with like one or two astronauts trained by NASA or SpaceX or something. And then he's also invited like six or seven artists to go with him. So the idea is they go up and go around the moon uh, and they won't be like orbiting, I don't think. they just like go around and come back, uh, which is a hell of a trip. <laughs> yeah, It's quite far away. But um, yeah, the idea is then it will inspire all of those artists, like a new generation of conceptual art or something, which is weird. Right. And like he'll invite those artists for free. He'll bring them. Uh, but I think he's the only pressure to make something good when you get home. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because like, hmm. then the idea is that he uh, exhibits to, like in a gallery all of their art together, being like, "Oh, this was inspired by our moon trip or whatever." Yeah. Uh, but the pressure would be so intense. Yeah. We're like, "Oh yeah, I'll go to the moon," and you get this whole yeah. thing paid for. You're like one of the first, like the first people to do it in since nineteen whatever. Yeah, and uh, you have to come back and make art yeah. about it. Like yeah. the pressure must be just intense so he's only he's offered it to one artist so far and it's um a director a film director uh dave chazelle now i don't know how dave true this <laughs> no that's a, that's a different person um yeah no he was the director of la la land and first man oh, cool well uh, first man is appropriate yeah, yeah exactly um but i don't think he's accepted or anything also i don't even know how true that is but that's yeah you see, according yeah, to wikipedia it's not really like a slam dunk like you would think it over wouldn't even if you did go because the risks are so non-negligible like a, yeah you know, i mean anything could go wrong you could but even die. even if nasa were doing it at least they've done something like that 50 years ago now but like spacex it'll be relatively yeah i mean it's not it's not planned until post 2023 until they get all of the tests for the starship like pretty much done yeah but still very cool like that would be unbelievable to do the, but i don't think it would be worth the pressure coming back and having yeah. to make art but or music i mean something like that would be harder when you make yeah. a song <laughs> that's so good by the moon. but the pre like also to be a billionaire like that first email that you're sending spacex you're just like hey just want to give you a couple billion Cold call it, cold to, email. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> send people to space. Like, <laughs> it's like, just like get Elon's like personal email and be like, hey, Elon, uh, uh, how much would it be yeah, yeah. <laughs> to send me and some of my friends to the moon and back? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I will pay. XOXO. XO. XO. Yeah. <laughs> and the overall goal, I think Musk said like his whole thing about setting up SpaceX is to colonize Mars um, from a sense of if we fuck up our doom. Yeah, to be like a backup copy of humans to like keep going. <laughs> a backup copy. But that's something that like Jeff Bezos has really pushed back against and said it's a stupid idea. And he wants to make basically all of the industry done in space. So in low Earth orbit. So that's where all the, the manufacturing will be done. And then Earth is just a place you live and have parks and stuff and slides. and. So manufacturing pools. as in like everyday factory made things. I guess so. That's kind of weird. But it's, yeah, it's also funny that they don't align too much on it. I mean, he was, he just said like, look, it's, it's actually so inhospitable on Mars. Like it wouldn't be that nice. You know, it's not just like the dirt, the uh, dirt is red. I mean, it's, there's no atmosphere. Yeah. It's one percent of the atmosphere. It's radiation. Sun. And then it's like minus 84 degrees on average or something. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's hell. But, Brian Cox, if he's listening, he said recently that 
um this for you the, Brian. the deepest parts of mars so like the the deepest the, parts the, the like holes or trenches or caves caverns oh uh, yes i see what you down mean. there it's like a pretty constant temperature mm. and somewhere in the shadow all the time and it's around 20 degrees and you're protected from the radiation so Sorry, 20 degrees yeah. oh, wait 20, 20 degrees, degrees celsius like why is it so warm in the like holes <laughs> um don't know <laughs> but they recently <laughs> that's your homework for this week yeah. they recently um found lakes on mars didn't they last week uh i think they've well they definitely found underground lakes i know but the, i said there was some something. news thing exercise for the reason <laughs> any mars experts out there want to fill us in feel free <laughs> yeah i don't know i kind of agree with um musk to be honest I think that they're, like, even if you just have a couple of people on Mars constantly, like, obviously, the idea is to send a few people there and let them stay there. But I think that it's worth having people there just in case something goes wrong here on Earth. Like, why not, you know? Yeah, but you would always want to have, like, pretty good people, you know? You don't want to run out and be like, oh, no, our last hundred people are all terrible. Murderers. (laughs) Yeah. They're all morally corrupt. <laughs> you could use it as a jail like they did to Australia back in the day. Just that saying. would be a bad idea, I feel. You've I mean, Australia sentenced. turned out okay, I guess, but... They did well. Um, I feel like it would be different on Mars. <laughs> yeah. But, but the, even though, like, so that's their ultimate goal, but every other, including that side, like, they're all actually setting sights on a permanent moon base, which is realistic and probably within our lifetime. Yeah, much more realistic. It was it was kind of weird. I I guess the Mars thing just get it kind of inspires people a bit more in terms of like it's a much bigger feat. Yeah, we'll do something we did fifty years ago. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if they have a base on the moon, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, if you can have people on the moon constantly, like that would be such a an amazing achievement. And then yeah. like you can do so much science up there uh, that you can't do from Nerd. here. Nerd. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, radio astronomy is. All up there. Anything that the atmosphere gets in the way of. Also, like anything you want to test in, like different gravity. Yeah. Was it one sixth of the Earth's gravity? I think. Yeah, you can be lighter. Um, you know what was good? Can I jump around here? Uh, okay, people were we jumping. Yes. Okay, jump away. Pre- prepare for a jump. We were on the moon and we're jumping. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually though. If I was a lecturer, I would set that problem. For students, like, how hard would you have to jump? What's your force to just escape the moon's gravity? Like, I'd say it's really big. Yeah, (laughs) the moon is still massive. Yeah, it's pretty big. Anyway, um, when the dragon was duck capsule was docking, you're talking about fictional crew dragon. Dragon crew dragon was docking with the ISS. Like the video is so cool, and that they're going so slow, and they just come up together and just like little kiss, little kiss together. But it's so gentle. But Relative to the Earth, they're going like 27,000 kilometers an hour, I think. Oh, yeah. So, like, they're actually whizzing around. Like, it happened above New Zealand or something, I think. But, yeah. So, they're going super fast. But it, it looks really slow. Yeah. And then... At relative velocity. <laughs> so, so it's fine until... So, that's the problem with um, them wanting to bring the capsule back to Earth. Because then it's moving out of that reference frame, basically, and coming back to Earth. And then it just has to drop, like, 27,000 kilometers an hour yeah, speed. So- Oh, yeah, so how fast did you say it was going? So it's 27,000 kilometers an hour. Is how fast the ISS is orbiting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, imagine hitting the ground at that speed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, like, you probably wouldn't even be able to hit the ground. You'd probably vaporize in the atmosphere like you would just turn to warm dust. <laughs> yeah, but there are astronauts on you know the ISS who are going that fast relative to us. And... and aging more slowly as a yeah, result but there's a world it's in the guinness book of world records so you know it must be true <laughs> but for um person who has gone the furthest forward in time i think and it's an astronaut who's just been on the iss for like a year or something and they're gone like 0.1 billionth of a second or something like ahead yeah that's interesting though, like when you say forward in time because they're younger right yeah, but they're not going backwards in time. Well, they're not really going anywhere in time. <laughs> this is, Put the Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> that's the way they framed it, so it must be true. Yeah. Um, okay, special relativity. What are the equations? <laughs> like, yeah, let's go through it right now. Everybody ready? Uh, no. Okay. So, yeah, there is a guy and he's like a few minutes younger or something. 
I wouldn't even say it's that far. Yeah, that'd be good. But I thought like it was like a few seconds. Of a second. Uh, yeah, maybe possibly. I can't remember. Well, the important point is he is younger. No one will remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly we don't remember. So to jump once more, Jeff Bezos, who owns Blue Origin, he owns Amazon, right? Yes. And Musk owned PayPal or doesn't own it anymore? He just set it up. Musk? No, well, I think he, so he sold it for, I can't remember how much, but I think he kept shares in it. Okay. So he didn't technically, like he doesn't run it, he's not involved in it anymore, but he kept some ownership. Yeah. But not enough to like technically own it. Something like 16%. It's like, it's funny only now in history that people who are really rich are like, hey, I can do any, like, why didn't... Like, I don't know, like 50 years ago, somebody, anyone could have, I suppose the cost might have been so much higher relative to mm. the... Yeah, I mean, it depends what you mean by like, oh, can do anything, because like 50 years ago, they wouldn't be able to do what they're doing now, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And they're probably still funding crazy stuff. I'd say they were. I'd say it just wasn't as public, maybe, uh, or as cool and inspiring, like, kind of... It'd be so funny, though, if like um, Mark Zuckerberg set up a space program, because he's such a robot. <laughs> It's like this is to get my robot army down from space. It's been sitting on the moon for yeah. <laughs> the last thousand years. Take all your data to the moon and eat it. <laughs> Protect your data, people. And this podcast is sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Get a VPN. Um. Yeah. No, I think that's that's probably fine. All right, great. Well, We're going to wrap it up here? Uh, yeah, I think wrap it up. Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, comment on this podcast and ask any Dragon Capsule-related questions to Sean, he'd be happy to answer. He does all the specs here. Blueprints up on the wall. We're both up on, on Twitter. We read every tweet we get. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. All right, cool. Thanks Pod- for listening. Pod- 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 Pod-